Hey, Jay. Glenn Morris here from the Smart Energy Lab, and today I'm going to give you a 4777 Part 1, the new version, the 2024 version, a tech quickie. This is number one of the tech quickies. So straight into it. What's changed in 4777 Part 1? Well, we've got rid of a few definitions. For instance, there's no longer a standalone mode. We've just got rid of it. We've made some very clear demarcations between different standards and 4777 Part 1. So no more confusion when 5033 changes something like the maximum PV voltage. We don't have to mirror it in 4777 Part 1. So now 4777 Part 1 covers the IES installation, the inverter energy systems only. 5033 covers all of the PV array right up to the input terminals of the inverter and 5139 covers the battery system right up to the input terminals of the inverter system. So there you go. We've kind of made it easy so if things change in future, we don't have to line up multiple inverters, uh, multiple standards. Okay, what's next? Uh, phase balance update. A um, little bit of change here. So we now have a maximum of 30 kVA for a single phase installation. Now, of course, that's a maximum. It's the lesser of uh, the, the grid supply capacity or overcurrent protection for that installation, of course, but 30 kVA max for single phase installations. Big news for those doing commercial industrial installations. Uh, central protection is now called interface protection and it's not required for systems under 200 kVA. Now, of course, this will come down to your application with your DNSP and it's still up to them to approve it, but hopefully they'll follow suit because after all, they were one of the authors of this standard. We want to minimize the number of main switches. So now there's a maximum of two inverter main switches to switchboards which have other loads. So if you're doing three inverters connected to a switchboard, you need to have a aggregation board or sometimes called a marshalling board, which has no loads connected. And it has a single sub main isolator going to a uh, main switchboard or other sub boards. And that becomes the isolator for the inverter system. So you end up with one switch to rule them all. That's great. So got it, maximum of two inverter main switches on a switchboard that contains loads. Uh, we've come up with a definition now for a new sort of product that uh, I've seen them in Australia, and it's called a inverter power sharing device. Something that allows, say, a block of flats to share one PV system with one inverter or one group of IES inverters. So the definition in uh, 4777 part one now covers what we call IPSDs, inverter power sharing devices. Another really exciting change is V2G, yes, vehicle to grid is now here. Well, sort of, We've got to wait for the cars to catch up. But V2G is approved for mode three and mode four. So for the geeks out there, uh, they'll know what mode three and four is, but mode three basically is your, uh, your so-called uh, EV charger, your AC sourced charger, and mode four is a DC sourced uh, connection. So where the car provides DC directly into an installation, uh, that's mode four. Now, the big change is in terms of the definition of supply types. Now, we used to have kind of a mishmash of, you know, grid supply, normal supply, inverter supply, standalone supply, you name it. We've now narrowed it down. So you've still got your normal supply. So main switch, grid supply, or normal supply. But we've got this new terminology for what used to be considered, say, a solar uh, inverter with just a solar port and a grid port. They're now called supplementary. So supplementary supplies are for systems that operate in parallel with the grid. They don't operate independently. So you turn off the grid supply, the inverter goes off. That's a supplementary supply. So you now have got a main switch, supplementary supply. Alternative supply. Now that's something that can be done in multiple ways. It could be a simple changeover switch. So you've got changeover switch to generate a backup or changeover to grid. Or it could be internal within the inverter. So the inverter might have a backup port, sometimes called EPS or UPS functionality. That's an alternative supply when the grid fails. And lastly, you could just have an inlet plug that is providing an alternative that you can supply with such as a, a generator or similar. Now, it's important to remember that multi-mode inverters can be uh, can function in both supplementary and alternative supply modes. So when they're connected to the grid and the grid fails, their supplementary input must turn off, but they may well have a secondary alternative supply output, which keeps some loads running. There you go. So that's 
uh, alternative. Now we're up to independent. Now this is what we used to call standalone. Independent supply is for an inverter system that is capable uh, of supplying an installation. It may be able to use the grid, but only as a charging source. So there's no export possible. And it needs to be compatible or tested to Appendix M of 4777 Part 2. And by the way, we've amended 4777 Part 2, so it aligns all the, all the terminology with this standard, 4777 Part 1, so there's no mismatch in, termino um, mismatch in terminology. Now lastly is substitute supply. So this is kind of a curious one, probably not many people will be having one of these. I'm not sure if it's um, really a, um, a popular option, but it may come about. And a substitute supply is where it supplies a single outlet uh, in lieu of the grid. Single out socket outlet, maximum rating of only 15 amps. So this might be a bit similar to say Fronius's uh, PV point, though um, it, you'd have to make sure that it complied with the definition of a substitute supply. So thanks for watching. And can I remind everyone, please check out the Smart Energy Council's Smart Installer Program. Amazingly, thanks to the sponsors of that program, it's now free. That's right. So to become a Smart Energy Council Smart Installer, uh, it's absolutely free. And unbelievably, it includes free access to 10 of the most important solar and battery standards. I mean, you're probably saving $2,000 just signing up for free. Uh, it gives you free access to face-to-face -face installer roadshow events, free online CPD training. Now, um, plug for Jeff Bragg. Jeff, he's doing a deep dive into 4777 part one, so way more than I'm telling you. And of course, you get quarterly uh, access to um, their webinars and updates. So there you go. Uh, don't forget to sign up for the Smart Energy Council's Smart Installer Program. Thanks for watching Tech Quickie number one on 4777 part one, 2024. Check it.